Happy Monday, sailors. Today we're continuing our unit of working dogs. On Friday, we learned about Balto and his epic journey to Nome, Alaska to deliver that vaccine to save all those kids' lives. And um, fun fact, his body is stuffed and you can see it, it's preserved at um, the museum in Ohio. So today we're gonna get into working dogs, but police dogs, dogs that do work to, to protect us and it's our article today is dogs versus terrorists and so we're going to open with an anticipation guide and then we're going to do some some pre-reading so just take a picture walk and look at some of the fun pictures and captions that are included with our article and then you're going to see kind of this awesome uh canine takedown um this dog is like not today and literally busts through um, a driver's window and, and takes down this guy who's led the police on this police chase and then we're going to read just the first three sections of dogs versus terrorists. So not the whole article, just the bit. And we'll pause and we'll do some reading work on a reading guide as we go through. So no homework for you today, but let's go ahead and open up our document. It's called Dogs versus Terrorists in Google Classroom. Dogs versus Terrorists Anticipation and Reading Guide. And so, you know, got the, the fanged terror right there waiting for you when you open that up. So I will pause and find this piece, please. All right, and we're back. Dog versus terrorist. So we're about to read this fascinating true article about canines and law enforcement. And I think that would be such a cool thing to be a handler and to have your, your colleague, your buddy, your coworker be a dog. How sweet is that? So let's respond to these items below just to get your pulse and just see what any prior knowledge you might have and some things that might surprise you before we read. And I know some of you um, have German Shepherds, have Labrador Retrievers, have some really cool dogs that are, are Border Collies Shepherds that are very intelligent, very strong, and that are um, historically have been used as working dogs on farms and um, in the military. So number one, true or false, some dogs' jaws can deliver 750 pounds of pressure. That is enough to chew through steel. 750 pounds of pressure. So right next to it, put a T if you think it's true or an F if you think it's false. All right, and then we'll go over the answers for each section. Number two, dogs can smell cancer. Can, um, can dogs smell disease, true or false? And number three, police dogs do not live with the human police officers that they're partnered with. They do not live together. And finally, four, dogs have been, been used in wars to transport medicine and to relay messages. So true or false, one, two, three, and four. I will pause and then we'll go over the answers. All right, so number one, that is true. Dogs can bite down through and sometimes deliver a bite that's 750 pounds of pressure, which is... It's quite terrifying. Dogs can smell cancer for number two. And police dogs, so number three is false. Police dogs actually live with the human police officers that they're partnered with. So their, their work day continues on in, into, their, into the personal life they are together. And number four, dogs, they have always been used. They've always been part of human history and, and human life in wars, um, in work, in farming. But yes, they've been used in wars to transport medicine and even to relay messages. So let's go down to the next little section and get your pulse on these. Multiple choice. Um, so this is a question. A dog sniffs with short breaths and they can take in as many as how many breaths per second? Per second. Five, ten, or twenty? Take a think there. Decide. You can just bold or highlight the best answer, A, B, or C. Number six, in the past year, how many patrol dogs have been killed or injured in the line of duty? Okay, put your best answer there, zero, 15, or four. All right, I'll pause, get your, get your ideas going for number five and six. So number five, this seems crazy, but they can get their little sniffers going and they can take in as many as 10 breaths per second. So five is B, and in last year, there have been four patrol dogs killed or injured in the line of duty. And fill in the blank, two breeds of dogs that are used in law enforcement are. So what kind of dogs do you think are commonly used in law enforcement that make good police dogs? And number eight, detection dogs. What are some of the things that they have to sniff out? What two items? Okay, so come up with your ideas there and we'll go through the answers. Okay, German Shepherds and Labrador Retrievers are commonly used in law enforcement, although there's other dogs too, but those are the big ones. And detection dogs, they are used to sniff out explosives like bombs, like in subway stations or in big cities, or they're on hand at like big festivals or events in different places. Um, 
and also and also drugs, drug sniffing dogs. And they were, we used to bring the dogs through the middle school and sniffing around lockers and you know looking for drugs. And so that those are the two things that they're trained to do. And so at this time, I'm going to invite you to go ahead and find our, our article. So it's posted. You can also, if you're looking at our slides, you can get it from here. Dogs versus terrorists. So you let this baby load. And it's, it's not hugely long, but we're just going to divide it into two parts. Part one today, part two tomorrow. So I will pause and go ahead and find dogs versus terrorists. But also keep your document open that we just worked on. Okay, when you have this thing loaded, you can see a lot of awesome text features. We have our title, we have a little intro blurb right here, which is kind of cool. And you see a dog at, at a subway station and a dog with his handler. And then this is really cool, how a dog finds a bomb. It takes you through the six steps. So here's the first three, and then the second three, the last three are on the next page. And then finally, <laughs> you see a police dog going through some really rigorous training to subdue a suspect. And sometimes handlers are even injured this, uh, with broken arms because they have to like simulate what this is like and they have to play the role of a perpetrator and allow their own dogs to come at them. So you get to see what training is, is like a little bit. And then what can a dog actually smell? So you're going to do this as a crew. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, pull up this slide. And this has some different steps, and then I'll just allow you to handle this as a crew. And the first one, I would like you to read the first page. Just open up the first page. Just view it, not read it. Just view it. There's not much to read. Based on the title, tell your side partner what do you think this article will be about. I will pause. So look, on, look at the title. Chat with your podmates. What do you think our article will be about based on the title? Go for it. All right, moving into number two, teachers have a student read the introduction on the first page aloud, the part that just says, in post 9-11 New York City, have a student read that aloud, and when you're ready, continue on. So as you can tell, in a major city like New York, the subway, it could be a potential target for a terrorist. There are five million passengers at any given time on the subway, and it's an awesome job for a dog. Okay, let's go to the third thing we're going to look at. I want you to look at just just viewing these last couple pictures. Just talk about among your crewmates what um what kind of work do you think that um, police dogs do? What kind of work do you think they do? All right, teachers. Next thing is we need six students, each reading a short little section of how a dog finds a bomb on pages six through seven. So go through those steps. Um, and you can go scroll down. It's on the bottom. One, two, three, and then four, five, and six. So I have six readers read those little captions along with the pictures for how they do bomb detection. Go for it. Okay, and our last two um, for our pre-reading work. Page eight, um, we need somebody to read this caption. Check this out. Would you want to have the job of training police dogs? So scroll through here. Go ahead and have somebody read that caption and then as a crew discuss um, or get your pulse with your crew, raise your hand if you would be interested in training police dogs, knowing this is the type of work performed. Go ahead, have a reader read that. Heck no, that'd be terrifying. I do not think I would want to train police dogs. That's just me. I would not want, you know, 200 pounds of raw fury, fury and terror coming at my arm, but I'm glad people do because I think canine units are awesome and the, these service dogs are so cool. And lastly, let's go to our final page. What can a dog smell? And what surprises you the most on this page? They can smell cell phone batteries, bed bugs, they can smell cancer, tree fungus, and they can smell people trapped and wreckage. Besides drugs and explosive, these are all of the different things that dogs can smell. Okay, thank you for going through that pre-reading work with us. We're about to read the article, but I would like teachers to click on the link, the clip. This is going to be, this is a pretty cool um, clip that shows a, a canine, a canine that took down a pretty famous takedown in the line of duty. So go ahead and enjoy this just a couple minute clip and you can see him bust through the driver's side window uh, to go for the attack. Go for it. I will pause, enjoy that clip and come back. Awesome. So here we go. We're going to read just the first three sections of Dog versus Terrace. So scroll down. Make sure you're on the reading guide here. You see this little guy in his, his bulletproof vest. So on patrol, as we read section one, these are some things you're looking for. Law enforcement dogs, they are fierce and they are intimidating. What are three details that support this idea that they are both fierce and intimidating? 
And then I just love how the author writes this. Yes, it's it's informational to nonfiction piece, but that doesn't mean we can't have rich, colorful, fireball word choices, especially verbs. So I want you to grab two powerful verbs from just this first section. An example is like rushing, right? Like attacking, okay? So how do we know they're fierce and intimidating? And what are some power verbs as we read? So I will read section one to you, and then we'll go into section two right after that. But you're looking for fierce and intimidating, and also power verbs. So here we go. So you can scroll and roll onto page six, and we're right here. As you read, think about what makes dogs effective in law enforcement. Here we go, on patrol. It's a hectic Wednesday morning at Times Square, the busiest subway station in New York City. Thousands of commuters are rushing to work. A new team from the Transit Canine Unit is just arriving. The team has four police officers, each paired with a dog. Large, pointy-eared, powerful, these dogs make people nervous. On subway trains, they stare at passengers with unswerving intensity. Every time the train doors open, they pivot to scan the crowds on the platforms. Each dog weighs close to 200 pounds. Their jaws can deliver 750 pounds of pressure, enough to chew through steel. And in preparation for their police work, they have received as much training as a battle-ready U.S. soldier. The team has been at Times Square for only a few moments when one of the dogs, a large German shepherd named Thunder, erupts into ferocious barks. A few feet away, a man crouches next to a pillar. Thunder clearly perceives this man as a threat. Show your hands, shouts a police officer holding Thunder's leash, but the man ignores the officer's command. Suddenly, he lunges toward the cop, who immediately lets go of the leash. Thunder leaps into the air with lightning speed. His jaws clamp down around the man's arm. Get this dog off of me, the man screams. He manages to break away, but within a few steps, thunders on him, jerking him to the ground. The suspect has been subdued. Well done, Thunder. All right, so this little section here has got some amazing action verbs, so find two. And also, what are some great details that we can tell that police dogs, they are, they are intimidating. They are fierce, okay? It could be about their jaws and the pressure. It could be their weight. It can be what they do. I will pause and go ahead and answer questions one and two, and when you're ready, you can continue on. All right, so we're going to go to section two, a natural super soldier. We know Thunder is. What are two different roles dogs play in the New York City Police Department? That's what we're looking for as we read. And then some evidence to support that dogs, they're just natural for this kind of work. They are natural super soldiers. They are made for this kind of work performed. And when people you know, we think about dogs as pets primarily, but no, they are, they are intense and they're ready for this kind of police work. So let's go to natural or natural super soldiers, that section. And we continue. A natural super soldier, dogs serve in two roles within the New York City Police Department. Some are detection dogs, trained to sniff out explosives and drugs. Others like Thunder are patrol dogs, which hunt down criminals. Patrol dogs have one of the most dangerous jobs in public life. In the past year, four have been killed or seriously injured in the line of duty. They are also strikingly effective. Sending jaws, sending in jaws and paws intimidates even the most hardened criminals. In 2010, one subway station on Lexington Line Avenue was hit by, so scroll down, 20 muggings and thefts in a matter of months. Once a canine unit began patrolling the station, the number dropped to zero. As a species, dogs are made for this sort of work. No other animal so diligently aims to please humans. A good dog is a natural super soldier, strong yet acrobatic, fierce yet obedient. It can leap higher than most of us and run twice as fast. Its eyes are equipped for night vision, its ears for supersonic hearing, its mouth for subduing prey. But a dog's true glory is in its nose. Dogs can detect just a few tiny particles of a substance, like a fleck of a cookie crumb at the bottom of your backpack. Just as astonishing is a dog's acuity. It can identify different substances within a scent, like the spices in a soup. How? A dog sniffs with short, sharp breaths, as many as 10 per second, drawing the scent deep into its nasal cavity. The receptors there are a hundred times denser than in a human and can pick up on a wide array of particles. Drug smugglers often try to mask the smell of their shipments by packing them with coffee beans or air fresheners or sheets of fabric softener. 
but it takes more than that to fool a dog. Paul Wagener, a behavioral scientist at the Canine Detection Research Institute at Auburn University in Alabama, conducted a test to prove it. He flooded his lab with different scents and then added tiny quantities of different illegal drugs. In one case, the whole lab smelled like a Starbucks, Wagner recalls, but the dogs had no trouble homing in on the drugs. They're just just incredible at finding the needle in the haystack, Wagner says. Okay, so when you go back, we learned that there's two different types of roles they serve in the police department. Some are detection dogs and they sniff out explosives and drugs, and others, um, they hunt down criminals. So patrol dogs versus those who actually go after and subdue criminals. So check that out on your document, the two roles they play. And then how are they natural super soldiers? So go back. I will pause, but talk about their scent, talk about their night vision, their speed, their trainability, being really obedient. Okay? So I will pause. And then um, there's one more question there. A dog's acuity. They can identify different substances within a scent, like spices in a soup. Or even though the whole room smells like a Starbucks, they can find the meth or the heroin or whatever drug is there. So what do you think acuity probably means? Okay, I'll pause and then we'll go to our final section. Okay, and it's okay if you didn't finish everything as we're moving into the last section. You can have the rest of the hour to do that and then also tomorrow to finish. But we're going to read one more section together today and then tomorrow we'll finish this article. But section three is called The Best of the Best. And this is cool because we're talking about the human dog companionship that has gone on since ancient times. So just two different um, examples here to support the big claim that dogs have been human companions in battle for thousands of years. They have um, gone to war of, with us, protected us, worked with us in battle and war for forever. So two different examples from history there. And then what if a dog does not make it? Um, what if in the training they, they prove themselves not to be really cut out for police work? So what happens to those dogs? So that's number two. And then I really like the word idiosyncrasies, right? We all have our own little offbeat quirks. So dogs and their handlers, they have to really learn each other's idiosyncrasies. So what do you think that word means? What's an idiosyncrasy? And then your pet, if you have one, a cat, dog, whatever, guinea pig, what are some of his or her little idiosyncrasies? And if you don't have a pet, what are some of your idiosyncrasies or some of your friends' idiosyncrasies? So cool little quirks, ticks, habits, behaviors that you have that make you who you are, unique. And the last question today, why is careful cop dog training important? So the, the police invest so much money into, the, into their canine units and careful training. Why is that really important? Okay, so let's go to our final section, best of the best, and we continue on. Okay, the best of the best. Police dogs are heirs to an ancient and fierce bloodline. For thousands of years, dogs march into battle with their human companions. The great mastiffs and sight hounds of Mesopotamia wreaked havoc on the battlefield. Dogs ran with Attila the Hun's hordes and wore battle armor beside the knights of the Middle Ages. In 1495, when Christopher Columbus sailed to what is now the Dominican Republic, he brought greyhounds that could run down an enemy and rip out his guts. During World War I, Germany fielded 30,000 dogs and used them for everything from transporting medicine and wounded soldiers, so scroll down, to carrying messages between the trenches. The German Shepherd, first registered as a breed in 1889 by a former German cavalry captain, was favored during the war for its intelligence and steadiness, as well as its power. So if you want to pause and go ahead and put in some historical examples of how dogs have always gone into battle with us, that would be really cool. So just two. Where, and what different times? They talk about World War I. They talk about Mesopotamia. They talk about um, other, other times in history. So go ahead. I'll pause there and let you answer number one. All right, continuing. Dogs that don't make it for police work, idiosyncrasies, and then dog cop training. Here we go. Today, a variety of breeds are used in police work. Labradors, for instance, are superior sniffers. German Shepherds are preferred for patrol. Regardless of their breed, almost all American police dogs are imported from Europe. They come mainly from Germany, where dogs have been carefully bred for centuries. Once in America, they receive a year of intense training at one of several canine training facilities around the country. Those that don't make the cut in training usually become service dogs, such as guide dogs for the blind. Only the most gifted are recruited to work for the New York Police Department. 
Once a group of new police dogs arrives in New York City, each dog is carefully matched with a police officer. For the next six weeks, each cop and dog team builds its working relationship, learning each other's cues and idiosyncrasies. But the real goal of this training period is to put the dog under the full command of the officer. An officer who loses control of his, his or her dog in a chaotic environment, like in New York City's subway station, risks disaster. These dogs are inherently aggressive, and if they go too far, someone could get injured or worse. This is the hardest part of canine work. They're able to, being able to put on the emergency brakes on a dog that is capable of biting through human bone. So the dog can kill, right? It's trained to, to, to subdue somebody, to attack, to go after it, but they have to be very obedient and they have to learn all the cues so that's really important or somebody could die and you could have an unintentional accident. So to close our work today, um, you're just going to be working on section three, best of the best. And I want you to put what happens if they're not good for police work. Um, what, are, what does the word idiosyncrasies probably mean? What are some of your pet's idiosyncrasies or, or some of your own? And why is this careful cop dog training so important? All right. Tomorrow we're going to watch a really cool a really cool video about military dogs and training and how much the United States military invests into um, our dogs of war who, are, who have become heroes. And there's even, um, they get uh, military honors and funeral when they die, they die in duty. So I'm going to give you the rest of the time to go ahead and finish um, your responses for sections one, two, and three on our reading guide. And I look forward to our work tomorrow.